everyone, welcome back to the Odin series. So I thought I would show the power of Odin. So in the Odin folder, you can go to this thing called Vendor, folder called Vendor. And inside we have a load of stuff. Basically a lot of libraries or external things that ship with Odin. And one of these is a thing called Raylib. And Raylib is a C library that allows you to basically develop games. So I decided to basically show this and learn it a little bit. Um, basically it, it's written in C, Raylib. I can show you here, Raylib Odin. Um, so it's basically, you, he converted uh, C code, well, Odin code into C, so it was compatible. So I basically decided to make a tic-tac-toe game, and I'll show you how this works. So I just run this, and we have a tic-tac-toe game. So we've got a lot of debug information in the top left, but basically it works like regular tic-tac-toe, like this. Uh, obviously we call it Norks and Crosses in England, but it <laughs> doesn't really matter. Like this, draw, click play again. If you, Obviously, if you uh, do this, X wins, click the play again. That's all that, well, all that happens. I could make AI and stuff like this, but it's not that important. But I'll just show you the code and how this works. Um, Raylib is kind of like, it's like you can make games in it, but you kind of have to do almost everything yourself. Um, <clears throat> it is very flexible for that reason. All right, so I basically made everything uh, just in the main package. <clears throat> so basically to use Raylib, you just import vendor uh, colon Raylib. That's all you do. Uh, so init, where are we, main. And then we just, you can simply just go Raylib init window screen width, and that will just create the window. And then we set the target FPS, 60 FPS, and then we have init, which basically does, uh, it's me setting up the uh, the arrays for um, for the actual game. Uh, but most things in Raylib will actually use like C and you have to convert it from Odin to C. Uh, so most of the time you're not going to use an int. So you have the int type, int type in, uh, in, in Odin, which is normally 64 bits, but it's register size. So it depends on your CPU. So if your C CPU has 32 bit registers, it'd be 32 bits. Mine has 64 bits. So an integer will be, be 32 bits or 64 bits for me. I32s on the other hand are the same, but 32 bits all the time. When you're working with Raylib, you want to use the i32s instead, not ints, just for compatibility reasons. Uh, because you normally um, have to, if I open up, let's see if I can find Raylib Odin. Uh, you can basically just find a lot of things here, but most of these things will be i32s. You see a C int is basically an i32. So some functions, like if I show you, like draw, say draw text or something like this, it takes in a C int. And a C int is basically an I32. Also takes in a C string, which I had some problems with actually getting <laughs> getting uh, C strings to work because you have to convert from a string to Odin into C strings. But I'll just show you some of the code. So we have the, basically we started. So we spawn the window. I spawn some textures. That's just basically the X and the the X and the O's. And then we start a game loop. And basically we have this thing for which is a while loop. Same thing as a while loop. Uh, not Raylib dot should close. That basically detects, did you hit the X on Raylib or did you press the escape key? If you press those, then it will close. And then I increase the frame count and then update the game. And update the game is just, you can put whatever you want, but normally what you do in, an, in a game engine is you update the game and then you show the what, whatever's on the screen. So update, show screen, update, show screen, every frame. So update, you want to put stuff like, I mean, you can design this how you want. It's extremely flexible, Raylib. You don't need to do it this way. I just find it the most logical way to do it this way. Uh, so we have select the square. So basically what all I did was just create a load of, I had it in one fold, one one file one before, but then I decided to split it up. So everything's in package main. So I'll go to, yeah, select square, which is in select square.odin, which is all, again, package main. And basically, we are just checking the mouse position. So you can basically just get the mouse position whenever you want using, say, mouse position equals Raylib got get mouse position. If I open this, I'll show you. So I'll run this. Let's go Odin run dot. It will open a window. But you see here, I'm basically to the console. I'm showing the mouse position. So it's basically it's at the top. It'd be zero zero. At the bottom, it will be whatever the max frame rate is. So 1,700 to 990 to 990, like this. That's how it works. So I'm basically, when I 
if select if you look here selected square zero one two three four it's based on the mouse position so i basically just use these lines to differentiate where which square we're selecting that's how I do that. That's how I, how I select that. We have to convert it to an F32. Uh, so the board position was basically I have a load of constants. So I have um, stuff like the screen middle is this. So you have the screen width, screen height, 800 by 1000. Uh, again, the screen middle is basically that divided by two and the screen height is that divided by two. I use the screen middle to work out other things. The board width is the screen width divided by two. So it's all basically proportional. The only thing that wasn't proportional, I believe was the um, was, uh, I guess, the texture size, which I probably should have made scalable, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and then, yeah, just these vertical lines. And I'll show you drawing. Um, so you draw game. Basically, just begins drawing, end drawing, defer. Uh, and then I sh don't think I should have that twice. I don't think I should have that twice. Let me just remove that. That, that seems like an error to me. <laughs> I'm not the, the like a complete expert with Raylib, so... Didn't seem to break anything. Okay, that's fine. So you shouldn't have begin drawing twice. Clear background. Basically, just it makes the background gray. And you can... And there's a load of colors here. So you can go to Raylib and there's a load of colors you can use. Uh, where was I? Draw. Uh, then draw board, which basically the board is just a, a, white, a, a white rectangle. That's all it is. So draw a rectangle. And then I put the board position in. Basically, if you go to draw rectangle, it takes a... Uh, Position X, position Y, are both C ints, both I32s, a width and a height, and then a color. So back to draw. So I have the ball position X. I had to work these out, basically. Uh, the ball position X is screen middle minus board width so I divided by two. So that's your, it's basically like the middle and then you have the board. So the board should be like this. And then you want it halfway to the board because obviously if you put it, a whole board would be off the screen. So I just worked out these positions and then draw board lines, which simply just uh, draws draws the line. I'll show you what, if I remove this, I'll show you what this is doing. Um, it's basically just, yeah, drawing a line, quite obviously. So it's this line here, which is what I'm drawing there. And the draw the line, it's basically uh, draw line takes in a position X, start position and start position and end position basically. And they're vector twos and then the color. So here it's simply just like vertical line. So it's basically, if I open this, so it starts here, X and Y, and ends here, X and Y. That's all I'm doing, just draw a line from there to there. Um, then what else do I do? So I spawn board images. It's basically based on the board position. So I created a board array uh, and then just loop through the board array and say, if it's empty, do nothing. If it isn't empty, then I have positions, positions with the offset. For some reason, you have to use an offset because if you just spawn it where it is, it, the texture will start there. It's not in the middle of the texture, it's at the corner of the texture. So you have to use an offset. So I, which I found is the offset was 0.8% of that. So draw texture with this, so that's a scale, I believe. Uh, where, where's get position from index? But basically, I just minus an offset, which I found was uh, about 80. So about 80 is the offset. Because if I take away that, if I make this zero, for example, I'll show you what happens. Close that. So I'll show you what happens. Like, it will be just be off. And I'm not drawing the line anymore, but anyway. So yeah, it's be off. So basically, the offset will does does that. So I put this to 80, and I found that that sets it to the right position. Then, yeah, I'll put the uh, draw lines back on. I just didn't save it, yeah. So when you put the offset on, it puts it in the center. So that's why I use the offset. What else? So, yeah, so it's basically just if you find an O piece, then spawn an O piece. If you find an X piece, find an X piece. And then the board is just simply an array of ints. Uh, and then... Basically, whenever I set the piece, but basically I just look where the where the where the mouse position is, whatever the selected square is. When I click, I find mouse clicks. When I click back in, uh, where is it? Update. You have select select the square, then detect mouse clicks. So detect mouse clicks is simply when it's released. When we click and let go, we run this function which sets the square. 
And the set in the square, basically, if the game started as false, which is in the board, the game started here. So obviously, if we if someone won, we the game should be not started. So we don't want to set a square. Uh, and we set the starting position if it is, so we can start the game again. If the square's valid or invalid, then return. If, this, if the uh, square's not empty, then return. Otherwise, we set the squares, and then we have to detect the win. So we look for the wins, which is not very efficient at all, the way I did this. I could have used bit boards or something like that. I just couldn't be bothered. So I basically just have a massive loop. So if it's X to if it's X is X to play, then I detect an O win because O just played, and which basically just loops through a load of win conditions. So I loop horizontal O piece. I just basically just loop so say is there three O's in all of these positions? We have top three to top to top right, which is just coordinates. So the top three to top right is basically horizontally. Is there an O piece? Is, is there three O pieces? Is all we're doing, and if you don't find an O piece, then you break. And if you do find all three O pieces, you return true, and then O1, and then you stop the game. So detect win. So I had this thing add strings. I'll go through uh, actually writing as well. But basically, game started is false, and then send a, show a message. O wins, click to play again. Add string to message. I'll show you how this works. So this is in main, I believe. I, I'll show you the debug information first. So back in main on the, on the update, we have... Um, fill debug information, which is in debug. Basically, I just wanted to see a load of information, like what's the board state? I'll show you again. At the top left, we see the board state. So if I put an X here, this goes to one. Put an O here, that goes to two. That's basically how it works. Uh, the selected square will show you what's selected. And game started, say for example, we have X win. Game started is false, and we click again, and game start is true. So I just wanted to you know, debug stuff to see if it's working. So I have debug information in the top left. How this works is uh, I kind of had some problems. I wasn't sure exactly the best way to deal with converting a string to an int. And the problem with a string is it's a pointer. So you need the memory somewhere at some point. So I bas basically decided to make a buffer array that's global. So I created this debug info, which is the 400 of bytes. And bytes are just you know, ASCII characters. And have a uint for the uh, the index. We basically, have this massive array, and then the index is wherever we are. So you start from the index and add more characters like that. It's a bit cumbersome to do this because you have to um, say if I want to add an int to the char array, I have to like pass an int using string convert itowa, which I had a lot of trouble finding actually. That's the main problem you have with Odin is just finding information of how to do stuff. Like how do I convert an int to a string? You have to go to string convert itoa, and that converts an int to a string, which I couldn't find, but I eventually did find, and it took me a while. Um, that's the main problem you'll have with Odin, is just knowing how to do stuff, because uh, most things you'll find are just on the Odin website, if they're written down. Uh, sometimes you can find stuff, sometimes you can't. So, add string to try array, it basically just will take the string and just put it in, put each character in is all we're doing. And if it goes out the, the bounds of the array, we've got an error and we print that. Because <clears throat> we have max 400, it shouldn't go over 400. So basically every time I just have a buffer and I at the start of every frame, I set the index to zero and then rebuild what we're going to write. So at the far, at the start, we, yeah, so we have, so we add string, we add frame counts, and then we add the frame counts, we add an int, and then we add a new line. And then we get the mouse position, and then we print the mouse position using FMT A print, which gives you a string with whatever you put in here. So it basically builds a string for you, and then we, uh, I guess we put that in, we add that string to the, that's all we're doing, basically. We're just using these helper functions to add to a uh, char array. And then when I actually want to print this, if I go to, I think it's in draw, because we are drawing when we actually draw text. A draw message here we have which uh, I call, sorry, draw message is the win message. Then we have draw debug console. I draw the debug console. We convert whatever's in the debug info into a string. And then we use strings.clone to C string to convert it to a C style string. Because a C style string is basically, it's an array of characters with a null terminator, which is zero in, in C. That's basically what we're doing. We're converting a pointer with a length to a C string 
using this clones to C string. And that's basically how I print, which was a bit cumbersome. I'm not sure if there's an easier way. There's probably an easier way of doing this. I don't know what it is. And I do exactly the same with message. So at the start of the game, I uh, have set starting position, not that. I think, yeah, set starting position will basically write here, uh, add string to message array, X to play. So basically I have exactly the same, but with a message array, which is the size of 30. And in the message array, I just have I add char or add string to message array and it just adds a string to it and that's all. And every frame I reset the message index. That's all I'm doing. So it's like a buffer. I'm just using it like a buffer, basically. And I do exactly the same with that and draw the text. So it's literally exactly the same just with message array here. And basically that's how it works. And I've done a lot of testing, so this does work. But I mean, tic-tac-toe is probably the simplest um, kind of game you could make with this, I guess. Because um, it's not very complicated to make. It's just based on clicking, mouse position, uh, and stuff like this. So it's it's very simple to show that it works. Say like this, should be draw, draw, click, click to play again. And that's basically it. So this is Raylib. I mean, you can basically make full-fledged games if you want with this. Of course, it you know you need to understand how Raylib works and stuff like this. But you can experiment with it. You can make stuff like as you like. It does take a bit of getting used to, and uh, you have to know a lot of uh, Raylib functions. Of course, I, it took me like a day or so to one or two days to make this. Uh, but there's lots of functions. There's draw pixels. I can't imagine drawing pixels. That'd be quite complicated. You can make 3D games or 2D games with this. It's not restricted. Uh, but it does give you free freedom, like freedom to do basically whatever you want in Raylib. Because uh, originally it was a C library. And yeah, it's just been converted over to Odin. But yeah, so this is one extremely useful use for Odin is game development. Uh, I'm not sure. I've never actually tried to install Raylib on using C. I'm pretty sure it's a lot more complicated than just downloading Odin because Odin is very easy to install. Just download it. And then you get this free with it. You, it just comes with it. And it's, I don't even think it's that large. Let's have a look at the size of Raylib. The Raylib is 37 megabytes. Not too big. I mean... You'd think it'd be larger. I mean, Odin, the Odin file folder is 400 megabytes. So it's only 40 megabytes for, for this. So it's not too big. Yeah, so this was Raylib.